Hello, welcome to Marketing Matters, the show where we explore all things marketing and uncover those things that matter for you and your success. I'm your host, Denise Malay, and my hope and mission is to bring marketing and technology to you in a way that's useful without jargon, complexity, or confusion, so you can grow your business, expand your impact in the world, and build your best life. Today's episode is called Keep More Website Visitors. We're going to talk about three tips to encourage more of your visitors to your website to stay and browse and view your content as opposed to bouncing in and out because they instantly don't think the answer they're looking for is there. So we're going to talk about some cues you can give to make it open and inviting. And before we get started, I would like to share a quote with you from my favorite poet, Maya Maya Angelou. She says, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And I bring this to you today because I want you to think about your website as a place that makes people feel something. It's not just a billboard for your business or a storefront. I mean, it can be likened to those things, but it's a place that's visceral, that's got emotion tagged to it, and people are going to instantly pass judgment on it. And you want to do your best to present you and your content in a way that's going to resonate with your audience and speak to the things that are important to them to get the encourage them to stay. So let's move on. I want you to think about your website as the candy store in the mall. Make sure it's full of wonder and surprise, as well as the things you know are there from the minute you see it. So you you see that it's plainly obvious that all your favorites are all there. The bright colors, the wrapping, it's not shielded behind any doors or glass. It's all out there to be seen and touched. So you want to bring that to your forefront. You want to make sure that you organize your website such that they don't have to hunt for anything. They know exactly where to go to get the answers they're looking for. And whether that's menu items or tiles or options or however you present it, you want to make sure that you don't inundate them with so much that they can't find what they're looking for. Now, this is an overwhelming picture, this candy store picture, right? But I'll challenge you, as a, as a younger person walking through the mall, you'd see this and you would have an emotion immediately, right? You would feel how exciting it was to go there. Now, you can't evoke that with your website, but I will say that you can make someone believe that they will find an answer on your site by giving them the answers to their questions, to their issues and speaking to what they need. So this is back to sometimes we use a website to present what we think people want. And when in actuality, we need to present what they need instead. So here's an example. If people are looking to build websites, right? And which is what I do. I could tell them what how many pages they need, how to do this, how to do that, how to do that. But what if they're asking the question, I have a website, how do I get people to stay? Right? Well, for me, that was writing a blog post and doing this show that presents tips to keep people and make people understand how to get people to stay and browse on their website. Because I know that people who have websites, even though they've built them, sometimes can't get people to stay. And their statistics and their analytics are showing them that people are coming and and leaving within a split second. So they're not getting what they need. So in my hope in doing this show and writing my blog post about the same topic was that somebody's going to say, how do I keep my website visitors? And they're going to come to my site and they're going to find my article and it's going to be exactly what they were looking for. And I don't mean do this in a way that's that's not honest. It's all honest. 
it's me thinking about people who own a website and trying to figure out what they need, what they anticipate, where they are, and what problems they're having, and how can I address them, okay? So let's move on. The next thing I want you to consider is, and this is a beautiful picture, right? This is a photo of these two young women dressing a storefront in their floral store with dried flowers. It evokes a real calm, peaceful thing, right? But can you tell directly from this photo what's their most popular flower? What's the most important flower? What's the thing they sell the most? What's What are they known for? You know it's beautiful. You know that they have everything that you can imagine. But do you know if they create flower arrangements? Do you know if they do wreaths? Do you know if they just dry the flowers and make potpourri? You don't know right? They've dressed this window and it's beautiful, but you don't really know what it is they do. This is a stretch. So I'm trying to say that if you put too much information on one page without answering questions that and, and addressing individual themes or topics, that you can leave people more confused than you can serve them. So I wanna encourage you to have a page, a theme or an idea on each page. Now your homepage is a little different because it's the gateway to your website. So you can have sections that are different things. But on the interior of your site, have one page per concept, one page per theme, one page per blog article, one page per podcast episode so that if someone gets to that page, there's enough meat there, there's enough information for them to get their questions answered, to feel satisfied that they've come to you, to want to read more, right? As opposed to being inundated with too much. People leave because they don't see an answer. It's not obvious that their answer is gonna be there. And they also leave because it's just too hard to find the answer. So there are two different competing things. So you can have this beautiful, beautiful website, and I'm not saying don't make it beautiful, but try not to cram everything you do into it and cram every idea you have into it and multiple ideas on a page. Try to narrow it down to one main idea or theme per page. The next concept I'm gonna give you, and this is an example here of carrying the flower theme one flower, sunflowers, right? And the woman in the page, she's got joy, exuding joy, and you don't even see her face, right? You see sunflowers, and sunflowers are happy. They make you happy. I'm sorry, there is not a person on the planet that wouldn't see a sunflower and smile, right? So what I want you to think about, and it gives off a, a joyful vibe to have her in the field of sunflowers up to her head with her arms extended and she's just excited to be where she is. So can you group your ideas into a theme on a page and show who you are and show your excitement and show your, your um, enthusiasm for what you're talking about? Okay, so this concept is not just to present how to, here are three tips, here are five things to write a, write a letter, here are 10 things to put on every web page, right? Not plain, not boring. Make it exude your humanness, humanity. Make it seem like you've written it, okay? Now that can be having your picture on the page with a funny smile, or it can be a serious smile just to have your presence there, or it can have you doing something, or it can be a picture like this that shows and matches up with the text, or it could be like my candy picture in the mall. I love that picture because it takes me right back to being 12 when I walked past the mall candy store and all I wanted to do was go in. 
I didn't want candy at the moment. I didn't need candy at the moment. But every time I saw that store, all I wanted to do was go in because it was a wonder. And you would stare around at the walls and you were just like, if I could have one thing, what would it be? Oh, I just need to go see all the gummy bears in rainbow colors of yellow, green, blue. And imagine filling a bag full of all this candy. And I'm not a sweet tooth. I love savory things. I'd rather have pizza as a kid than I would candy. But for some reason... I see that store and I want to be on the inside. Everything's right there at my hands and my eye level. It's like I know how much fun there is in that store. You want to narrow your idea to one idea per page and group it such that people can see who you are in the writing. Okay? So um, present the image along with the writing make it seem like it's coming from you. It's not just textbooks, okay? It's somebody finding an answer that they've been hunting for and you've given it, but you've given it with joy or you've given it with authority or you've given it with your own language and your own quirky ideas, okay? So now this next one. I'm going to say that make your website feel like home, okay? So this page is warm, it's festive, it's inviting you to cozy up and enjoy the space, right? Sit in front of the fire, get warm, sip some hot cocoa or a cup of coffee or a glass of wine. So I felt this the minute I saw this picture. When I chose it to put on this site, I saw on this uh, episode, I saw it, and not just because I had a Christmas tree, which I love, but the fireplace, it was open and inviting, okay? I wanted you to see that because I want you to give that feeling to people when they come to your site. And then I want you to let them browse, let them have ways to go and travel on your site and make it plainly obvious just like when you go in a library. There's racks and rows, there's numbers on the books, there's things at the ends of the aisle that tell them what's in the aisle. Um, You know, they, they know it's by author, there's a standard way to operate, and they can sit down and take their time. There's no rush. There's no annoying pop ups. There's no advertising. There's no inquiry to subscribe to my newsletter and anything that intrudes with their mission, their mission, why they came to your site. Don't hound them with marketing. Don't hound them with anything. Make sure you have contact information up there if they want to reach or find out more about you. Make sure you have a bio page so they can find out your background. Make sure you link to other places where you've been before, like guest appearances and show episodes that you've been on before, blogs, Places that you inhabit, how to see you at an event if you're in Clubhouse or if you're going and doing an event, you're on a virtual event or on a stage somewhere and you want them to go. Your website isn't about just marketing you. It's about serving who comes to you. So I want you to shift your mindset to If you want them to stay, you have to present what they need and what they want and what they're thinking. Okay, you have to let them sit down and figure out and take a look and browse through and see if you have the answer that they need. Because if you try to just attack them when they come is, oh, you're a visitor. I want you. I want you to buy from me. Nothing will turn you off faster. Right. Some people need to get to know you better. They need to see you as someone who has the answers. And the best way for you to do that is to give them the answers to their questions, not to what you want to tell them, okay? And show yourself in there. Now, my website has many different things on it. I have um, my blog posts. Hang on one second. And I also have excuse me, my guest appearances. So let's take a look at some of that. And I'm going to go off camera so you can see this, okay? In the big. So 
Now, up here at the top, there are many things, but my media is available here for anybody who doesn't want to go too far down. If they don't want to scroll, here's my guest appearances, here's this show, my book, my blog. They're all accessible in one place. And then I also tell about just what I do here, right? And then I have the latest things. So if someone clicks on a link from any of these, they go right to the blog. Here are all my show episodes. This is just the home page, right? So there are a few different sections. But then every page has its own theme. This is my guest appearances, where it, what podcasts I've been on, um, what events I've gone to, and people can actually go and see the YouTube clips for them, okay? And then here is the episodes of my show, which you all are watching right now. Here are the shows, and these are all on YouTube. People can just click on the tile and go there. And then I also have an events calendar and other resources, what current offers I have and how they can work with me and my bio. So I also try to include more of myself than I'm normally comfortable with because I know that people need and want to feel included and feel comfortable before they engage with you. And online is very hard. People are trying to assess you. They're trying to believe in you. They really want to, but the slightest thing that makes them think you're not for them and they're going to, they're going to hop. So you have to really work hard to present yourself and what you're thinking on your website. And trust me, it's an evolution. You saw my site. My site, this newest site is like six months old and I keep adding to it. Every time I have a thought, I put it in my blog. Every time I have a new topic, I make sure I make a show about it so that they'll get indexed in Google search. And if someone puts a question into Google search, they'll come to my site as an answer. So I really am working to try to make it more helpful and useful to people, but it's not quite there yet. It's getting there, but it needs more. And I'm going to continue to work on it. And I encourage you to do the same thing because it's an ever it's an evergreen, but it's an evolutionary thing. So you're going to continue to hone it and provide more information. The more clients you interact with, the more you hear what they're looking for, you can try to tailor your content to fit them. Now, I hope this has been helpful for you. I, I really didn't want to dive too deep into too many things. I just wanted to give you some ideas on things to think about as you're going forward. And enjoy that, your holidays as they come. Thank you so much for being here. I have a free gift for you today. It's a guide containing info on five website secrets to make sure your ideal customers find you. You can go to dmalay.com slash five, F-I-V-E. And then I'm also doing a, a um, workshop in January, January 10th, called Simple Ways to Make Yourself Findable. It talks about how Google records your content, steps to make sure that info about you and your business is readable by search engines, and ways to help your potential, potential customers and clients find your blog, podcast, social media, or website when they need you. Thank you. I'm so glad you could join me for this episode of Marketing Matters. I know how precious your time is, and my hope is you came away from this episode with one or two things, thoughts, nuggets that you can apply to your business. My aim is to provide clear, useful info for you so you can have a thriving business, amazing relationships with your customers and clients. And as always, if you have any questions, please drop a post on my Facebook or Instagram page, and the link is in my profile for the show. Join me here next week for our next episode, where we'll dive into more marketing and technology topics that matter for you. Thank you so much.